You spent years developing that killer guitar tone, and now you're ready to record that album. You set up a mic, record some tracks, and realize your guitar tone sucks. But why? Let me show you. What is up, everyone? Man Bun Madelet here. I've gotten some pretty negative comments on a few videos that I made a couple years ago saying how my guitar tone is pretty much garbage and I have no idea how to dial in an amp. Gotta be honest, guys, those comments kind of hurt. I assure you, my guitar tone does not suck. I just did a really shitty job miking my guitar cab. Before I get started, about once a month, I release a new video on guitar and recording gear reviews, tips and tricks, techniques, that kind of stuff. So if you want more of this, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell icon. Now, if you're looking for me to say, put a mic here, use this preamp and this interface, apply these effects, this EQ, tweak these parameters, you're not gonna get that in this video. Maybe in a later one, but in this video, we're gonna take a scientific approach on how your mic placement is going to affect your tone. Now, there's gonna be a lot in this video, so feel free to look down in the description if you wanna skip ahead. When it comes to recording, there are a lot of factors that affect tone. Three of the big ones are your mic choice, your preamp choice, and your mic placement. Once you've chosen the mic and preamp, which can be a big job itself, placing the mic is probably one of the hardest parts. Where you place the mic will not only affect the frequencies that it picks up, but it'll also affect how much room noise it picks up. And when I say room noise, I'm talking about not only the reverberations that you're gonna get uh, from off the walls and off other objects, but also other noise in that room. If you're in a nice isolated room, that really doesn't matter so much. But if you're like me and you're in a big open basement, that extra noise can really be a factor. Fortunately, you can usually crank up your guitar amp to overcome that additional noise. To show you how the placement affects your tone, I'm gonna do a couple different tests. The first set of tests, I am going to play three different riffs. A low, chunky one, a mid, melodic-ish riff, and a higher, solo-like riff. The purpose of the different riffs is to show you the different frequency ranges of the guitar. I use a reamping technique where I record the raw guitar signal into my computer and then play it back and go into the amp. This ensures the guitar signal is the exact same every time and takes away any variation in playing. I'll be moving the mic during the test so you can see how that movement will affect the tone. The guitar I'll be using is my custom Warmoth Regal. The amp is of course my Mesa JP2C that will be played through my custom 2x12 cabinet with the Celestian Vintage 30 speakers. I'll use an SM57 to capture the sound and I'll send that through an A Designs MP1 preamp. The SM57 is a pretty standard mic for guitar cabinets and the MP1 is a very clean, transparent preamp. It's not necessarily something I would use when micing a guitar cabinet normally, but the transparency of the preamp will lead to uh, less effect on the frequency analysis, which leads us into our next test. Of course, hearing anything can be very subjective, so we need something that's more objective. For the second set of tests, I'll be running a pink noise signal into a Yamaha P5000S power amplifier and into the previously mentioned cabinet. From there, I'll be placing the mic at different locations and analyzing the frequency of those locations. What is pink noise, you might ask? Uh, well, it's actually a signal similar to white noise you might have heard of, that has the same amount of energy in each octave. This is what it sounds like. This is a really good, easy way to visually see the differences in the mic placements. As I mentioned, this technique is more of an objective approach, which is really easy to be able to see the differences, but nothing's gonna be able to replace hearing the differences, which is why we're using a combination of these two methods to just see how the tone changes. First thing to note about speakers is every point on that speaker from the center to the edge is going to have a different frequency profile. The center of the speaker is going to have more prominent higher frequencies. You can see that right here. And the edge of the speaker is gonna have more prominent low frequencies. You can control the mix of the two by placing the microphone somewhere in between. Now, enough looking at it. Let's see how it sounds. For this test, I'll be placing the microphone about an inch and a quarter away from the speaker grill and moving the microphone from the center to the edge of the speaker while I play through the three previously mentioned riffs. Pro tip, turn that volume up so it's easier to hear those differences. Let's go. Thank you. 
Next we'll look at how moving the microphone away from the speaker affects the tone. When placing the mic as close as possible to the speaker, you're going to get a very generalized tone profile at that specific point, as we kind of saw in the last test. As you move the mic away, you'll start to incorporate different frequencies uh, from that speaker into your signal. Now for this testing, for the pink noise and for uh, the riffs, I place the microphone about two and a half inches from the center of the speaker. With the microphone all the way against that speaker grill, the frequencies are going to be pretty balanced. When I move the mic just three inches away, you get a big bump in the high frequencies, which is really due to getting tones from other parts of that speaker. And as you move it even further back, you start to see bumps in the high frequency and then drops in the low frequency. Now this is most likely due to the reverberations from the room. Now, according to science, this makes sense because Low frequencies aren't going to travel as far as high frequencies. So your lower frequencies will bounce off the wall and by the time they get back to the microphone, they're gonna be much more attenuated than those high frequencies. So that's why you have that big difference. Ready to hear the difference? Normally when you move the microphone away from the speaker, you're going to get um, less of an output from the microphone. To counteract that, I progressively raise the volume of the recorder signal in my audio sequencer so that everything is about the same level. This makes it easier to compare the changes in tone. Now again, make sure you turn up the volume. Now that we have an idea of how your tone changes when you move the mic back and forth and away, let's see how it changes when you change the direction of the microphone. You may have noticed that the microphone has been perpendicular to the grill or perpendicular to the speaker. Now this is called on axis. As you might've been able to tell, you get a more focused tone that can vary dramatically just by moving it a quarter of an inch. Another technique is called off axis. Bet you didn't see that coming. 
Basically, it's just taking that microphone and going anywhere from 90 to 45 degrees to that speaker. This makes the mic less focused on one specific point and captures more of the overall tone of the speaker. Using the tools I have, I really wasn't able to get a good real-time comparison of moving the microphone from on axis to off axis because when I moved it, turned it and moved it, it would move the microphone away from the speaker and you all understand how that affects the tone now. But at least I can show you some comparisons. Here's a comparison of both techniques with the microphone pointed directly at the center of the speaker at about one and a quarter inches away from the grill. Where we saw a large bump in the on axis microphone placement, you get a much more subdued bump from the off axis. And you can even tell up to about one kilohertz, they follow about the same profile and then change from there. If we move to about mid between the center and edge of the speaker, we see more similarities with some differences in the high end. Then at the edge of the speaker, they're almost identical until you get to about two kilohertz. If we compare the off axis pointed at the center and the on axis pointed at the mid, they are very similar. Another interesting thing to point out is if we look at all three of those locations on on axis, they are very dissimilar. They're kind of spread all over the place. And then if we look at the on axis at those same three spots, they are different, but there's not as much of a spread. So this should tell you that the off axis technique is going to be a lot less sensitive to the placement of the mic when compared to on axis. Enough with graphs, let's see how it sounds. So that's really it for showing you guys differences in tone with mic placement. Honestly, uh, when I started this video, I didn't really plan to do exactly this, uh, but I'm glad I did. I learned a lot from it myself and hopefully you guys did too. If there's one thing you should take from this video, it is experimentation. Uh, placing a microphone on a guitar cabinet is definitely not a set it and forget it type of thing. Hopefully this video helps you out. If it did, hit that like button down below. And if you wanna hear more about what I'm working on, like gear reviews, tips, tricks, and techniques, feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you're notified whenever a new video comes out. But hey, until next time, rock on. Oh.